Hey everyone, happy Ooh. Wednesday. We are back. And if you are new to this channel, this is our weekly live call. We do this live call every Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, my name is Bola. I'm the founder and CEO of Clever Girl Finance. And with me is my amazing co-host, Yasmir, who will introduce herself. Hey everyone, I'm Yasmir. I am one of the content creators for Clever Girl Finance. I'm joining you from New York City. Yeah, so come on in and tell us where you are joining us from. We would love to know. Uh, we love doing these weekly live calls to chat with you guys, talk about interesting topics. And today we're going to be talking about how to look expensive on a budget, how to look like money <laughs> when you're working on a budget. And I'll just preface by saying that looking expensive is you know, it's it's up to the, the what is deemed as expensive is really based on your budget, right? For some people, $100 is expensive. For some people, $1,000 is expensive. It's all about working, what works for you. And it's not about um, a certain type of style you should follow, right? I don't like when I see those videos of how to look elegant and it says wear a pencil skirt. <laughs> what if I don't like pencil skirts? So this is all about fitting this into your own personal style, your own aesthetic, but, you know, looking put together, looking amazing uh, on your own specific budget. So before we get into it, our announcement. So definitely check out the Clever Girl Finance books if you haven't already checked out the books. The holiday season is here. This is a great book set to give for the holidays. It has all four books. Uh, the first book, Ditch Debt, Save Money and Build Real Wealth. The second book, Grow Your Money. The third book in the series, The Side Hustle Guide. And then my most recent book, Choosing I wrote a book called Choosing to Prosper. So definitely pick these up. You can ask your local library to order them. And if you have purchased these books and you love them, uh, please leave a review wherever you bought them from. And thank you so much for the support. And since we are stepping into the holiday season and into a new year, don't forget about the Clever Girl Finance Planners. We have uh, the Business Planner and the Life Planner. Both of these are undated, so you can start using them anytime. And you can find this on our website at clevergirlfinance.com um, shop. Clevergirlfinance.com slash shop. Uh, this is like for your personal finances and your overall life. And this is for your business. So yes, let's get into our topic. Hello, Andrea. Hi. Hi, Joyce. Hi, Dahlia. Hi, Angela from Kenya. Hi, Adele. Hello, KH. Woohoo, Dahlia, you ordered your platter. Thank you so much. That means a lot to us. Okay, yeah, so let's get into our topic. <laughs> yes, which is, as you mentioned, how to look expensive on a budget. So um, I'm sure maybe a, a lot of us do struggle with like choosing what to wear, how to get dressed, how to put outfits together. Um, but today we're gonna discuss um, simple ways that you can um, work with what you have uh, to look expensive. And you'll be surprised some of the things that um, that we'll talk about. I, I was surprised um, on some of the things that I, I'm not doing <laughs> that I'm starting to do. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, so yes, we will talk about five ways today. Um, the first tip that we have is to use neutral colors. So these include black, navy, beige, white, um, I think green and brown, definitely brown. Green, I think also is, is counted as neutral. I guess if it's not like too, uh, like a sharp green, it, it counts as a neutral. Um, and the good thing about these colors is that they never go out of style. You can mix and match. Um, and when I learned about this, I just did a quick Google search and I noticed like um, celebrities kind of do the same thing. They'll, they'll wear their bold colors like for special occasions, but they're usually wearing neutral colors. Um, so that's something I, I observed myself. So I think this is a great idea. I don't know if you all agree, Bola, what you think? Well, I definitely think that neutral colors can make an outfit look more expensive because you know a neutral color uh, is not flashy, um, doesn't look cheap, and it just makes you look classic, right? The, whatever your style may be, this is not a this is not this is what your style should be, or this is whatever your style to be, whether you like pants, whether you like dresses, whether you like skirts, whatever your style is, neutral colors definitely help um, 
your your clothing look more expensive, right? And those colors never go out of style. But I would say that I don't always love neutral colors. But one tip that I received from my friend who's a stylist is that you can actually make, if you're someone who likes pops of colors, you can actually make pops of color neutral by wearing them monochrome. So if you wear like a shade of pink on top and a shade of pink on the bottom and then maybe your jacket is another shade of pink and it all ties in together that in itself is a is like a it's like a pop of color neutral and it still works in terms of that expensive uh classic aesthetic because it looks put together it looks cohesive so the idea behind neutrals or you know monochrome dressing is that cohesiveness the full look is pulled together where it's now appealing to the eye and as a result it looks expensive right uh, a lot of times when we don't look put together and i'm definitely there quite often <laughs> especially on my school runs it's really because we just throw things together clashing prints you know all kinds of stuff but being particular about those neutrals or that monochrome pattern can actually help you look more um I guess, you know, more together. So in the comments, definitely feel free to leave your opinions on that. But looking expensive tip number one is neutral colors. And I would, I would like slash that with neutral colors slash monochromes. Yes, um, th that actually reminds me in the last um, presidential inaugural, there were like a lot of women, including Michelle Obama, that went in, um, how do you say it? Uh, Chrome monochrome and it looked really really nice i especially liked uh, michelle obama's looked i hope but... that's the right word uh i think she wore there was one where she wore like shades of blue was it this one but yeah i know what you're talking about i hope monochrome is the right word but it's basically dressing in the same color mm -hmm. from color variations in tone or shade that's what i'm trying to say so in case monochrome is not the right word <laughs> <laughs> Correct me. I think comment. it is. I think it is. I've heard it. I've heard it been um, like. I've heard the word before used in that context, monochrome. Um, but yeah, that that's actually a great idea, and I, I like that. I've tried it before, and it just I I received compliments. Yeah, it's just more cohesive to the eye. It's almost like an eye trick in a way. Uh, Mitzi said, "I can do neutrals. I like monochrome as well." So if you're ever stuck on what to wear, you know. You want to dress up? Yay, monochrome is the right word. Thank you, Italy. <laughs> if you're ever stuck on what to wear, just think, okay, I'm going to pick a neutral outfit. I'm going to pick a monochrome outfit. And then you will look put together immediately and you will look expensive and like you mean business. Uh, so that's that's a great, you know, one tip. And that definitely helps me. The second tip is to invest in some timeless pieces. And by this, um, we mean things that don't go out of style um, too soon. So when you're out shopping, just avoid um, the fast trends so that things that come out come out in the spring and then you can't wear them in the summer because the trend is just gone. It's not, <laughs> um, people are not wearing it. Um, so instead, um, choose things that all last. Like pair of jeans, a pair of jeans never goes out of style. So go for that instead, or things like that that just never go out of style. I'm trying to think of other things. Um, jeans and the little black so dress. Clothes, a little black dress, yeah. A nice, um, uh, like a cardigan sweater. Someone says. So Dahlia says nice dark sunglasses completes outfits at the time so what are those yes. that's the that's an amazing tip right just either having it on your head or having it on your over your face or like just you know like hooked here sometimes can just pull your outfit together that's a really great tip dahlia so those classic items like you know your jeans your white shirt your white t-shirt your black blazer your trench coat uh zandy recently did a capsule wardrobe reel on our clever Girl finance instagram channel where she actually talks about all these different things so you can check out that that reel um but it's it's those things that are just you can wear them anytime no matter the year because they don't look dated right so there's so many trends that come and go um that after the season can look dated. Like for example, remember like last year, everybody was wearing lounge wear as outing wear as a carryover from the pandemic, right? Lounge wear was a thing, the sweatshirts and the sweatpants, but like you can still wear those, but um, that's not like a timeless look. <laughs> I don't know if it's any kind of look when you're trying to be serious, but I do wear those things. But also for example, remember the really chunky sneakers 
uh, were in at one point. Oh, yes. Very chunky looking sneakers, but mm-hmm. just buy regular sneakers that you can, like I really like Converse and they've been around for decades and they're never going anywhere and they always look like a casual chic, right? So be very careful about, um, even I noticed last year, a really big color was that um, really strong, bright green. I don't know what it's called. It was like a super bright green, like almost like the green on this pen was a trending green last year. I mean, if you like that color, that's fine, but don't buy stuff just because it's in style. And of course, it's it's great to keep up with trends, but then determine how much of your budget are you going to spend on trends? I would say like 10% of whatever budget you have for like your clothing. Mm-hmm. Don't spend 10% on trends so that you don't feel bad when you have to belong to these items. That's just my opinion. <laughs> Yes, and I like I like Dahlia's um, uh, comment about sunglasses. Like I realize that too. Like wearing sunglasses can make you look expensive, mm-hmm. whether you wear them on your face or on your head. So that's a good point. And another thing that I I recently tried that I really like, um, and it puts a an outfit well together. Whatever it is you're wearing, white sneakers. Yeah, white sneakers. Yes, with jeans. You can wear them with some dresses. Whenever I think about white sneakers and dresses, I always think about the movie Working Girl. Have you guys seen that movie where in, it's like an 80s movie? At the beginning, she's going to work with all the other New Yorkers with this square shoulder shoulder pad suit and her chunky white sneakers and socks. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so in terms of like the timeless items, so uh, I got a, an idea reading Andrea's comment is that you can keep your clothes like classic and then you can play around with accessories, right? Mm-hmm. You want to follow trend colors, trend styles. You can try like jewelry, handbags, shoes, a lot of those things you can find inexpensively, right? Um, and then just use them to kind of like jazz up an outfit. Like you can wear a simple black dress a hundred different ways based on your accessories that you put on them, based on your earrings, your necklace, your shoes, your bag, your belt, uh, your sweater, your jacket, and your baseline is um, the dress, right? So buy, invest in that quality classic dress, or you know whether it's a pair of pants or a pair of jeans, and then dress around it, and then you you have that you know put together look. Um, Dahlia said, this may sound crazy, but the right kind of underwear always makes a difference. It absolutely does. Uh, you know what my test is for underwear, especially when I'm wearing fitted clothes is, can I see that indentation of my belly button? You know how when you put on, I don't have a six pack guys. Listen, I have a twin, twin mom belly. When you put on a dress, sometimes you will see that like little round indentation of your, of your belly. If I can see that I'm not wearing the right underwear. (laughs) That's my test in dresses and skirts. Yes, I used to think that you you had to wear like white underwear under white, but that actually makes it more obvious. So I learned it's it's a, like a neutral underwear you're supposed to wear under white, not white. Okay, yeah. So Ktor says white sneakers, blazers, and jewelry to level up any look. Yes, you can put that on a dress, you can put that on jeans, you can put that on a skirt. That's a great tip, Ktor's. Um, Andrea said, I used to wear sneakers with office wear on the train to work. People still do that. It's still a yeah. thing. We're just not wearing the shoulder pads and the socks, the, <laughs> the, the ankles or the, what's it called? The, the midi, mid-leg socks with the sneakers. So you're still on trend, girl. <laughs> um, so yet today has a really good question. She says, any advice on headscarf? I'm a Muslim and whenever I, I tie my headscarf, it just kind of brings down the outfit. I would actually say... No, because there's actually a lot of Muslim influencers, style influencers here on YouTube. Google, search that on YouTube, that style their headscarves according to what they're wearing, and they look beautiful. They look absolutely beautiful. It's about matching your head, because again, your headscarf is tied to your religion, but it is now an accessory, right? And it's about styling your headscarf to your outfit. It's like um, the way I wouldn't wear an evening gown and put on a baseball hat, right? I'll try to find a different type of headgear that would match my evening gown is how you can match your head headgear to your clothing, if that makes sense, right? Uh, even if you wear the same type of headgear, you can have different versions, different colors, different ways that you tie it, if that's an option for you to match it to your clothing. So uh, no, it doesn't bring your outfit down. It's all about being creative to make sure you get the, you know, you style it nicely. Yes, I agree. And I've, I've seen um, women wear headscarves and they look very elegant and very well put together. Um, so I, I've seen, I totally agree. Yes. And then Sold Out said, uh, the neutral colored undergarments is key. Yes. So, oh my God, one of my biggest pet peeves 
is when I see, first of all, don't do this. Don't wear leggings that don't cover your booty. And then don't wear black leggings that don't cover your booty and then wear white or patterned underwear because the minute you bend down, oh my God, mm -hmm. <laughs> don't do it. Do not do it. <laughs> you don't think it's sheer, but half the time those leggings are super sheer when they get yeah. stretched from you bending over. So yeah, I always try to, if I'm, I always try to keep my undergarments dark, especially when I'm wearing lighter clothing, right? Uh, I just tend to buy black or like my skin tone nude and gap has a really great nude underwear selection for women of color if you guys are looking gap and it's very 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 affordable they have all different shades for like bras and etc so check those out gap being to sponsor this sponsor one of our videos <laughs> hi hi coa oh lots of tips here Someone said a little black dress looks smart with a nice scarf tied on the handle. What do you mean by handle? Do you mean like oh the bag? I oh, think. On the, on the bag of your oh yes, yes, that's very nice. I've seen that trend. Yes, it looks very nice, and it, it's classic. It doesn't go out of style. So, so we talked about timeless pieces. So again, your your basics, whatever the basics basics are for you, right? Whatever you know you wear, whether it's a little black dress, the white shirt, the jeans, the white t-shirts, your neutral colors, you want to have those as the foundational pieces in your wardrobe. And then everything else you can mix and match and just have a great time expressing your, your style, whatever your style is. Um, the next tip, and this is this can be overlooked sometimes, is to wear clothes that fit well. Um, you will be surprised um, how expensive one can look if the clothes fit well. So you want to choose items that flatter your figure well and they're well tailored. So um, none of that like um, jeans that are super long, you have to roll up um, or like, um, if you're wearing like a sweater and the sleeves are too long and they come up to your fingers, um, it, it doesn't look well. So try to look for tailored pieces or if you like a piece a lot, you can get it tailored. But um, I think um, nowadays, um, a lot of these um, stores are doing a good job at um, providing tailored items. Like for example, jeans. I, I'm five one. I'm very short, so like I, I, I had trouble um, shopping for jeans that weren't so long. But um, I recently went to like a, American Eagle, and I bought some jeans, and they fit perfectly. And I don't have to like spend extra money getting getting them tailored. Yeah, I think sometimes it's worth spending time to figure out what stores have the cuts that work for you. And that might mean taking a Saturday to go try on different things so that you know, okay, J. Crew is where I buy this from because I know it's gonna fit my body shape. Gap is where I buy this from. Um, K Torres mentioned the Outnet. I love the Outnet. This is where I buy that from. They have a sale for Singles Day. <laughs> you have to figure out what, don't just, a lot of people fall into this mistake of buying the cheapest thing but it doesn't actually suit you, and you end up keep you end up having to keep buy buying the things that you need, um, and it ends up costing you more money as opposed to just finding the spot where you know that it's going to fit, and you buy the thing the one time, and you know that this is your brand for this thing. Um, and I will also say that the the point on making sure that your clothes fit, there's nothing worse than ill-fitting clothes. It makes your outfit look cheap. And whatever your style is, whether you like to wear pants, mini dresses, cutouts, whatever it is, as long as it fits your body well, as long as it fits you well, you will look like a million bucks. But mm -hmm. when it doesn't fit well, when it's like tight here, weird here, like loose here, then it just looks cheap. So it's not about what it is. It's about how it fits. The fit is so incredibly important. You know how we see the celebrities on the red carpet and they look perfect every time or our brides always look perfect. It's because of all those fittings, right? They got that thing to fit every angle properly. So find out your brands that work for you, right? And then Th let that be your go-to, especially for those core pieces. So for me personally, I buy all my jeans, my jeans from Gap because I love the fit of them. I like the high-waisted mom jeans. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I like the straight lead cigarette jeans. So all my jeans come from Gap. It's really difficult for me to buy jeans from anywhere else because I know that it's very likely they won't fit me. They'll be too short. Um, I'm at that awkward height where I'm not quite regular, but I'm not quite tall. Right. So if I buy jeans at certain places, they're too short or they're way too long and I have to get them tailored. So, for example, Gap works for me for that. And then for basics like uh, white shirts, I would buy it from Uniqlo because I like their fit. So you have to figure out what fits you and then stick to that. Yes. The next tip is something that can be overlooked. And I'll be honest, it kind of blew my mind because I don't pay attention to this, but it's taking care of your clothes. Um, so yes, you want it ironed, um, not too wrinkly. That That's obvious. But I don't know about you, but I would ignore the washing instructions on <laughs> the tabs. I would often cut them off because they were so annoying, those tags. <laughs> but they have important information and they tell you how to wash it. Um. <laughs> yes. um, I've been, I've, listen, I have ruined many an expensive and good outfit in the washer or dryer. So I definitely um, pay attention to the tags. In fact, I borrowed a book from the library on how to do laundry the right way. <laughs> That's how I think I was so frustrated one day. I ruined a silk blouse. And I'm going to tell you what this book was. And this book basically changed the game for me in terms of how to properly do my laundry. Um, I have it in my list here. I'm taking notes. I'm, I'm looking at my library app right here. If I can find it because me and my kids share. Oh, it's called Laundry Love. Um, I borrowed this book here. I don't know if you guys will be able to see it. It's called Laundry Love. And it basically helped me take care of my clothes because listen, when I'm buying something I like, I'm going to buy quality over quantity. I'm the quality girl, right? But the minute it gets ruined, like it's, it hurts me so bad. So now I, I know what goes in the washer. I know what never gets dry. I know what just needs to go to the dry cleaners, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and I build that cost into my budget. So the other thing, yes. Oh my God. I don't have my sewing kit here with me, but Suicide <laughs> Chai says, be your own tailor. I have a sewing I have a sewing box. It has everything in it. They are very cheap and you can fill it up. $5 on Amazon will get you a sewing kit. Watch some YouTube videos, learn how to do those stitches and learn how to sew. I learned how to sew in high school. I know how to do all this. I can repair anything, okay? <laughs> anything. <laughs> but that helps you maintain your clothing. So it's really important to take care of your clothes. Um, even just like, do you fold or, or hang up things? Like if you have a suit or fit of pants, Hang them up. Hang up your dress. Mm -hmm. You have the space. Don't crush them up. Invest in a steamer, right? And this will save you from, this will help you wear what you have and save you from always having to buy replacements because you're taking care of your clothes. And then also look at the, the labels for the composition of the item. Um, I realized that 100% polyester doesn't wear well over time. But even when you're buying plain t-shirts at Target, Target sells 100% cotton t-shirts for like five, six dollars. And they sell 100% polyester t-shirts for like five, six dollars. But you want to pick the one that you know is going to wear well. Mm -hmm. and I would rather pick the cotton over the polyester. So pay attention to the labels. Wherever you shop, just look at the labels, whether it's Zara, Mango, wherever, J. Crew, Gap, whatever. Andrea, <laughs> she said somebody called Gap. This shirt is from Gap, by the way. <laughs> Hello, Gap. <laughs> um, Yes. Uh, so, so many good tips. Sold out said, one certain thing when in doubt, use cold water to wash. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> I use that all the time. Cold water. <laughs> you can never go wrong. Jennifer said, is it cheaper to go to the cleaners or buy a steamer and iron to save money? I take my clothes to the cleaner. So, full disclosure, um, when I wear shirts and things that need ironing, if I wash it myself, 95% certain that I'm not going to iron it and I'm never going to wear that thing again <laughs> because it's not ironed. <laughs> but when I take it to the cleaners, I can wear and wear and wear the thing because I know it's always going to be straight. Uh, I'm also quite lazy. I do own a steamer and I use it to refresh my clothes, but I can't use it to iron from scratch. I'm just, I don't like ironing. Some people, ironing is therapeutic. So Jennifer, I would say, 
It's up to you if you're leveraging a, a dry cleaner often like me, build it into your budget. Um, there was a time where I was very anti dry cleaning because I thought it was a waste of money, but I was wasting more money buying things because I didn't want to iron. <laughs> so <laughs> it really depends. So build into your budget. And there are only certain things I take to the cleaner. So the cleaner is not dry cleaning my whole wardrobe. Like, for example, I know I'm terrible with washing silks. And I have burnt a lot of silks, so I don't deal with that at home. Anything that has to do with like cashmere also, I don't mess with that at home. So there are certain things that I own that go to the cleaners. Uh, and then for things like knits and sweaters, you don't wash them every time you wear them, right? Um, really great tip I learned from a YouTuber. I think it was, I think her name is Alyssa Bell Tempo or somebody, where you wear a sweater and then you get like a, a wool or cashmere spray and you spray on the sweater to to refresh it and then you can wear it multiple times then i also heard uh, the tip about when you're wearing jeans you want to wash it every 10 wears mm -hmm. so that's you know so just stuff to think about um andrea said aren't the cleaners an added expense they are an added expense so be be careful with what you're cleaning and build it into your budget if you're if you're cleaning uh someone says turn jeans inside out Steamers are cost effective. Yes, I have a steamer. It is cost effective. Um, this is another great tip. Hand wash sometimes when you really want to preserve an item. And I love to hand wash. So I don't like to iron, but listen, I will hand wash. I will just sit in front of that sink. And a great uh, tip is use Woolite. So I learned about Woolite when I first had my my babies because like, oh, wash all the baby clothes, use a gentle soap, whatever. Woolite is a game changer. You guys know what Woolite is? Um, it's like this sensitive, gentle cleaner, and it really cleans, but it doesn't destroy your clothes like your arm and hammer and your tide. It's very nice. So check that out. Okay. I don't I don't like hand washing. You know, I, uh, I was supposed to like hand wash my bras but i i bought this like mesh thing you can put them in and you can put them in the washer and they wash well i'm like uh i try to avoid clothes that say hand wash only <laughs> oh someone miss french twist actually just gave that tip she says people don't realize it but cashmere should be hand washed with wool light cashmere wash when uh, uh use a dry toothbrush to fluff the nap so i bought i also have one of those you know those little it's like a little comb it looks like a toothbrush but it's for like the fuzz so another thing is Another way to look expensive is when you have sweaters and they get fuzzy, the sweater is not damaged, right? You can just get one of those fuzz removers and just comb it off. And that's one way to keep your sweater always looking new and mm -hmm. fresh and expensive because the minute a sweater starts to roll up, it starts looking cheap, even if it's the most expensive cashmere. So get one of those little, uh, they're online on Target and Walmart uh, or even Amazon, the, the, sweater what is it called what are they called somebody knows what it's called in the comments um <laughs> it's called the thing oh my god it's a little comb or i don't know what it is but someone's gonna tell us but get one of those things for your sweaters and it'll keep your sweaters always looking fresh and expensive okay so many great tips and then kate Torres share that <laughs> you bought her first home and you paid off your MBA student loan. That is amazing. Congratulations. Yes. What a great yes. <laughs> okay, so do we have more tips? Um, fabrics. Pay attention. Oh, yes, you did mention tips. fabrics. Okay. Um, like uh, some are more luxurious than others. You want to stick to natural ones like cotton, silk, tensile, wool. Um, those natural um, fabrics, they tend to last longer and they look very, very luxurious. Yes. And the thing for your sweaters, thank you, everyone. Clothes shaver or lint remover. That's exactly ah. what you're looking for. Uh, Andrea's got so many jokes. She says, no hand washing for me. I don't have time to go down to the creek and beat my clothes <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> you guys can iron. I will hand wash for you, okay? As long as you iron for me. <laughs> Fabric shaver. Yes. Thank you so much. Um, so yeah, so we said, let's go over neutral colors, monochrome colors, way to look expensive, neutral colors, monochrome colors, invest in timeless pieces, and then go trendy with your accessories and switch them out. 
um, wear cl the clothes that fit you well. The fit is so important. Mm -hmm. um, take care of your clothes so they wash well. You can wear them well. They look nice. Invest in the sweater shavers. Um, and then pay attention to the fabrics, right? Because sometimes you can tell something is just cheap. There is nothing more. There's nothing that gets me annoyed more than when I buy a cloth. When I used to buy clothes without looking at anything, and then I would wash it, and then it'll come out looking like trash. Like that would make me so angry. I would be so because when I buy clothes, listen, I'm buying stuff I really like. I'm not just buying. Oh, I'll take this. I'll take that. I'm buying stuff I really like, right? So. Definitely look at those fabrics and then buy stuff that you know that will be, that will last and it will be worth your money over time. Uh, <laughs> Andrea, you got us all cracking up over here. <laughs> um, so someone also said this is very important. Don't forget to take care of yourself for free take of your body, uh, take care of your hair and your nails. Sometimes just looking. Mm -hmm. Have your hair done. Put on some lipstick if you wear makeup. Can pull your the same way as sunglasses. Like the way your hair and your makeup and your nails can pull your whole look together because you just look polished and put together. So um, great tips, <laughs> Andrea uh, Adele said. I remember those days in the village <laughs> going to the creek to beat your clothes. <laughs> Red lipstick, people. Yeah, so today I am not dressed fancy, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to put on some red lipstick in for this video. And red lipsticks versus, versus snow lipstick, I feel like the lipstick sometimes elevates my look. I look more dressed up than I actually am because I am wearing lipstick, right? I'm not wearing any foundation. I couldn't be bothered to do, you know, these things are like casual. I didn't <laughs> just put the lipstick <laughs> and I showed up. <laughs> So imagine if I didn't have any lipstick and I wasn't wearing my earrings. I just kind of look a little bit blah, but now I look a little bit elevated because, you know, I made that little effort. And these things literally took me two minutes. One minute, 30 seconds for this, one and a half minutes for that. And it helps, right? Well, I hope it helps because I'm happy myself here. <laughs> it does. <laughs> and everybody is quiet in the comedy like, oh, okay, sure, boss. <laughs> Whatever you say. Your red lipstick elevated your look, sure. <laughs> um, and then, um, Yasma, you had those final tips on savvy ways to look expensive, mm -hmm. pain looking expensive. Yes. So you want to organize your closet so that you know what you already own and you're not buying uh, multiple things of, you know, multiple pieces that you already own. Um, create new outfits with what you already have. Um, so it's okay to wear something new with something that's old. I know some people are like, uh, my shirt is new, I have to wear new jeans. But don't fall for that. Um, buy items that are on sale. Um, being patient pays off many times because if you like an item, but it's like expensive, if you wait a little longer, um, they can go on sale. Uh, a, a neat trick too is, and it works for me a lot of times, is that I'll um, put something in the shopping cart and just leave it there. And then I'll get an email 24 hours later. Hey, if you buy this, we'll give you 10% off or 15% off. So, yes. so that, that's a good trick. And um, buy one piece at a time. Um, don't go crazy going, um, buying all these pieces tomorrow because you need them like just take your time um you want to know which items not only help you look your best but feel your best as well yes i agree so organize your clothes so that you know what you own and that used to be one of my struggles but now i know everything i own because i have things organized in a way that works for me um create new outfits with what you already have pinterest is great for looking for either sheets that give you a challenge of what to do every day like wear a new accessory wear a shirt you haven't worn in three months match a, a top and a bottom you have never matched before pinterest has all these like challenge wardrobe challenge sheets and lots of visual pictures that you can leverage but Buy items on sale. Pretty much most things will go on sale if you are patient. I do not like to buy full price unless I know that the thing is never going on sale. And you can get your items much cheaper. So the holidays are coming up. There's going to be Black Friday sales, going to be after Christmas sales. 
create your plan, build your budget for that plan so that you can shop to strategically for the things that you want to get. Uh, and then buy one piece at a time. You don't need to buy collections, right? <laughs> People buy collections, my summer haul, my fall haul, my win listen, it's yes. okay. You don't have to haul. Just buy the things you need as you identify the gaps because when you're buying one by one, you're more intentional with the piece. Does this fit into my closet? Is this um filling a gap? Does this meet my budget requirement? Right? You're more intentional about how you're spending and more intentional about your cost per wear for that item versus buying a hundred things at once and then figuring out, oh, how do I match this lime green leggings I bought because they were $3. You wasted $3 because yeah. you're not lime green leggings. So super important. I saw some great tips here. Um, Suicide Chai said she likes my lipstick. So I use, this is all MAC. I use MAC Midnight Moth Lip Liner. And this is the classic Ruby Woo. So every woman of color that wears a red from MAC is wearing Ruby Woo <laughs> pretty much. Um, Kator says secondhand is also great. You can find some yes. gems. Yes. So thrifting, consignments, luxury items you can purchase pre-owned. The real real is great, especially if you can go in store in New York City, your local consignment store. And not only can you buy, you can sell the items that you no longer want at consignment as well and get some money to put back into your closet. Um, sold out said organization is key, makes you more creative when deciding on outfits. Yes. Yeah, so I like mm -hmm. to plan my outfits for the week. Um, now that I can see what I own, I actually find it enjoyable. Whereas before it used to be a burden to try to figure out what to wear because nothing works together. But I've, I've grown past that, right? In my twenties, I was all over the place with trends. Not anymore. <laughs> and Suicide Shy says, if you buy something, it has to fit with three different pieces you own. Great tip. Andrea said, you listen, your memory, Andrea, she said, take an old dress, wedding dress. <laughs> a new one with that sewing kit. So Andrea is coming from me with <laughs> insider knowledge from our past lives. <laughs> um, Miss French Twist says, no strings hanging, shoes in good shape, no lint or soil around neck and cuffs, etc. Another thing that I do is um, when we come into our house, we take off our shoes and I clean my shoes. I use a, a wipe to clean my shoes. If they are dirty, I'll use on their sneakers because they're rubber. I will use a Clorox wipe on to clean the sole. So that's something I do sometimes. Um, Pinterest is my vision board. So many great uh, tips here. Looking for dupes for expensive items that are more expensive, more, more affordable. Can you create a staple list for basics? Yes, we have an article on Clever Girl Finance called How to Look Expensive and also Timeless Pieces Every Woman Should Own. So just go to clevergirlfinance.com slash blog and search fashion or style and those articles will come up. Um, so many great tips here, ladies. This is so awesome. This is like such a fun live, right? You guys like fashion. <laughs> I love it. All of, I love you too. And it, you make these sessions so fun. <laughs> so when we're all done, we're going to get our baskets and we're going down to the street, the stream or the Creek. We're going to have a communal washing <laughs> session. <laughs> Don't forget your soap. <laughs> And your brush, the brush we used to use back then to wash the clothes. I wonder why they used a brush. Like, what were they wearing? Canvas? <laughs> what kind of fabrics were they wearing that they needed that big brush? And then the wooden thing to scrub it like this? I know the wooden thing. I don't know the brush. You see the old movies. A lot of time they had this big brown wooden brush with, like, yellow bristles. And they would be like... Oh. <laughs> And anyway, no. <laughs> the washboard, yes. And then the, the washboard and something. There was another something to the set. You can buy it on Amazon, ladies. But anyway, <laughs> the, oh, one more tip. Really great tip. Don't be afraid to part with items that no longer fit, are worn, and are no longer in style. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, and Suicide Shy said it was animal fiber, so the brush was needed in the old days. Now we got synthetic. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank well, you. Cool. So be sure to check out the books. Great gifts, right? If you don't have it for yourself or for other people. And then check out the planners. Dahlia, I'm so excited that you got yours. 
Um, you can order these. These take a little bit of time because they're made made to order or made on order. So basically, this is what the life planner looks inside. You set your goals. You have your check-in. You have your weekly um, calendar inside. Uh, and the same applies to the business one. So definitely check those out. But thank you so much for being here. This was so much fun. We'll be back next week. Final uh, announcement, goal setting call is coming. 2023 goal setting call is coming in December, end of December. We're going to announce the date once we know what date it's going to be. But please um, plan to join us. We love doing this goal setting session. We do it once a year. It's a working session. We sit down. We are serious. We are working on our goals, our plans to succeed with our money, our careers, our lives in the next year. So uh, stay tuned for that information. And then in December, we're going to take a little break from the lives. Just so you know, we'll be back. We're going to take a little mini break so that we can all recover and recoup, but we'll keep you posted and we'll be back um, next week as well. So let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so exciting. Yes. Yeah, so that's in December. So we're just asking you to like keep it in mind now. And then as we go through the holiday seasons, we're going to be saying this for every live we're doing until then, as the holidays approach, please just align your budgets, fine tune your budgets, be intentional about how you're spending your money because this is the season mm -hmm. when your money is going to be like, oh my God, I got to go. I got to go. <laughs> And you're like, no, money, you're going to stay right here. So mm -hmm. be very, very intentional about how you're spending. You can spend money, buy the gifts, make, take the trips, but plan it, run your numbers so you know what it is costing you. So thank you so much, everyone. We'll see you next week. Bye. We appreciate you. Bye.